very perhaps is not done back. It corrected along with all the junk and fraud that got built up, built up. But what happened post 2003 that perhaps would have given you a good return? So any industry that kick starts, everybody wants to take a share of that particular pie and jump the bandwagon. Same followed in the infrastructure space. You saw infrastructure stocks skyrocketing. A lot of players participating in that infrastructure space, bidding at aggressive margins. And with the rising interest rate, this trying to create some kind of disturbance in the sector. Uh, and if I look back uh, in our financial services industry, and if you and not only with regard to mutual fund, if you look at stock broking per se also, did we ever imagine that DSP will get a valuation of two and a half thousand crore when we will buy them? Or did we think that Motila was or India Bulls will command that kind of valuation when it gets listed? It was very difficult to imagine for people who have been in this industry and in, in stock broking the late or early mid 90s. But it, it, it did happen. Now, if I look at the mutual fund industry also, it kick started, a lot of focus list, a lot of people participated, then came regulatory changes. When in any industry the super normal profit gets eaten away or there is a huge amount of competition that creeps in, then the fringe players gradually move out. It is a point where you can say the glass could be half filled or half empty. Now given the fact that the last several people I know, they are very optimistic people, they come with a very progressive bent of mind for them and cheers to them and I think the round of applause for, it, for this will be good. So I step out here, not going out of this industry thinking that the glass is half filled. The glass, and it's sorry, the glass is half empty, but anticipating that the glass is half filled and there are more to come. Yes, and I like this for believe. My reason is very simple of it. Now, let each one of us look at. If you look at back our earnings in 10 years ago, and you not now, you will see there is a huge amount of jump in the earning part. And not only the people in the room, but if you talk to any people in the industry, IT, any other pharma, any industry, their earnings are multiplied. Why? Because India and the economy is growing. Do you think this will stop? On a long term basis, I don't think this one is stop. Do you think when you like to establish or kick start in an industry or start a new business, when there is more competition or you will have less competition? I think we'll all love to start business when there is less competition. So I think the stage is built out here where the competition has minimized. And we see an opportunity which could go big and few people serving in that industry. So with that, I will start my presentation and I see a lot of uh, opportunity which is currently dying and we are unable to tap. So this topic that I am covering out here on the business model generation, which talks about the nine key building blocks which is extremely essential in when you try to carve out any business plan. Second piece is what are those strategic approach you can use in carving out your strategy for the business. But if it does not have a practical aspect, then everything becomes theory. So you link it with balance scorecard and try to connect those two pieces together to form your own strategy map. That's what the topic of discussion today would be. I will talk very little on what are the nine building blocks. I have a TV to quickly explain that also. This business model generation book typically uh, was carved out by 470 co-strategies across the world. I repeat, this book is not written by one person. It is written
written by 470 people across the globe over a period of time. And these are not theories, these are live examples and if you can lay your hand on this particular book, it's one of the amazing books that I have ever read. It actually picks up live examples of companies who have grown phenomenally and who have created their names in the industry, not only in their particular respective country, but globally. So this talks about the nine building blocks and what I'll do, each of the building blocks that you see, are, it's broadly explained, that's called the canvas, the canvas is broadly explained, but if you want to chat or discuss in detail about each of those building, business building blocks, you can call me and we can chat in detail. Because if I take in details, then the session of two hours will be also very less for this. Extremely important. 
And the last speed is the scorecard. How do you use those strategies that you have planned and try to monitor and measure them on a regular basis? The score part is the only element which adds practical aspect to the theory that you hear in the blueprint. So basically captures the DNA of a company which tells you who you are and what you stand for, what are your values. If, suppose, if your company were to shut today, who would get impacted most? You, customer, what? That are some of the questions possibly we will be able to ask in many brand of drug strategy. And typically, when you talk of a strategy, what question is creep our mind? A very common word is creep our mind. What are they? Vision, mission statement, values and all this. What? It's been beautifully put in this particular piece is it captures the entire process in two things. One is aspiration and the other is value. Where do you want to go? How do you see this company in the coming 10 years? How do you basically see, it, see the values of the company? What do you stand for? Are the values that you are following is only in good times and when bad times come, you you step back or you stand in good and bad time. How strong are your values? This defines the soul of that company. The strategy basically, the game plan that you have, again can be worked in three areas, which is scope, advantage, and goal. Scope in brief defines your area of operation. What are you going to do and what are you not going to do? That is what scope is all about. It may include geography, it may include customer segment, it may include the offerings that you are going to give. The advantage is a competitive advantage. What is the unique offering that you have? And typically what happens if you have something which others can't offer, then that should be able to command your higher price or reduce cost from your supplier. That's what the advantage plays a role. Third is the goal. Now I would like to spend out here goal. This particular goal is a medium goal. The, the, in aspiration, typically you put your long-term goals. How do you see your company's 10 years hence? But when you put a goal, you see how do you see your company in five years? And at times, if it's a startup company, it could be even six months. How do you see your company going in six months' time? That's a short-term or a medium-term goal that you put across on a year. Now, last but not the least, I said is the scorecard, putting a plan to action. And if you do all this work and you don't crack, like if you ask, a lot of people when I have meet, as an individual people, they do not have a target for their own self. Whereas you get people who are employed, who they have target year on year, they have put a number and they chase that number. So when you are running a business independently, why, should, why is it should be different? There should be a number because by virtue of looking at sales, people get charged or they change a particular goal in life. And if you don't have a goal, you're running everywhere. That's very important. And now to put the plan into action, the last thing balance scorecard. I would like to run this balance scorecard in the form of AB. Because typically balance scorecard explaining and theoretical part takes a little bit of time. This AB will cut that piece off. Attention. Financial. Uh, it has in place the customer engagement for the activity. It should have uh, the internal and external process.